So in this video is going to be talking a little bit about custom areas because we didn't really talk about those in the previous videos, but it's going to be mostly be like miscellaneous stuff. So I'll, I'm going to take you through the finished Hershey Country Club uh, Inkscape and uh, just talk to you maybe about a, a few of the more interesting areas and you know stuff that might just help you out with questions that you might have. So um, back in the Inkscape here, uh, Hershey Country Club, where did it go? go here it is uh so this is hit completely splined out now i do have my whole 99 turned off otherwise it's hard to see the satellite underneath there so i do have my whole 99 turned off um and you know you can see here's hole one and hole two you can see in this case i do have a hole one hole two hole three and um i won't go into details about so you saw here that hole one covers this area it actually covers hole one and 18 and the driving range. So that's what I'm blinking on and off here. And you can also see that my cart paths are in a specific cart path here. And I also have some other folders or layers that are even on top of that. We'll, we'll get into that more in a second here. Um, you can create any really layers that you want. And you can see in here, I have a lot more than, this is a 36 hole course. I've got a lot more than 36 holes labeled. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So let's dig into this a little bit. One is you notice, let's talk about custom areas, is I have this yellow custom area. Now there are a bunch of custom areas. We've got this custom one, custom two, custom three, okay? Now through a lot of this course, I do have like this area I decide to do is pine straw. I think I initially said it was going to be deep rough. I decided to do it as pine straw instead. And you can see there's a bunch of pine straw, which are more of like the finished landscaped areas of the course that are going to be more manicured. And then for the areas that I felt were going to be, they're like thick with trees and they're not necessarily mowed and they're going to be more like a deep rough area. Um, they're going to have like a leafy bottom. I decided to mark with this custom three. I didn't choose custom three over custom one or custom two for any reason other than it was yellow and I thought yellow stood out better to me. Um, I could have used any of these custom ones. I also liked it because it does have a blend. So I want to blend this custom one and this is this area here is just going to be rough. So this would blend from custom one. I'm sorry, this is custom three into my rough. Rough being what's going to get filled in there by my whole 99. Okay. Remember, hole 99 is this, which I will designate as rough later on when I submit to Blender. So this will get a custom blend into my rough. Um, I did not use this blend here. I don't think anywhere that has that has this custom for no blend. I didn't see a need for it, um, but maybe that will come up at some point. Uh, let's see here. Oh, around my ponds, I don't know if I would, and this is an experiment for me actually at this point, is I did piece, this is a, I think this is custom one actually. Yes, this is this custom one. I was thinking about doing, uh, I'm sorry, it's custom two. And it does have a blend. I was thinking about doing kind of like this embankment. Uh, the, the ponds here, and maybe you'll see it if I disable this. Uh, let me see, hole one. Yeah, you can see the pond here is like the water in certain times of year gets low and there's like this, gravelly muddy bank to it so i was going to experiment to see if i could create that gravel muddy bank with this shape that i put in there i might come back and change it at some point that's more of an experiment i wouldn't recommend that you guys do this initially for your courses um another thing that i did let's see here uh there's an interesting area very complex area that you, you guys might be interested in all the way in the southeast corner and this is kind of like a, a signature area of the course. There's a lot going on down here. Uh, let me see if I can find, if you click on any shape, uh, let me get rid of this overlay. So this is hole 55. Let me see what this ends up being. Yeah, that's, that's a decent amount of it. Um, so this area right here, so you can see, yeah. This is the Hershey factory here, which I built a, a, a custom uh, building for. This is the Milton Hershey Mansion. There's a creek that runs through here, which I designated as not as like this creek, but as a lake. The reason for that is I really wanted to do some custom work with the banks. So remember that the lake has an inset. So just because this says lake doesn't mean you have to use it for lake. You can use it for a creek. But 
in inside of Unity, uh, the water plane for this, and there'll be more on this later on when I talk about water plane, because this is sloped from this end all the way over here, I've used RAM to do that. Okay, you, you're going to need RAM if you're going to do a, do a creek or a water uh, or, or a river, for instance. Um, but the look that I'm going through with this water is a bank. So I did want a inner uh, or inner blend there, an inner an inset to work with inside of Blender. Again, I would experiment, and and you'll see once we get into Blender. And that's why I only have you guys do a couple holes. So if you only do a couple holes and you do have water on like a separate hole that's not in your first two, just spline out the water and then you'll be able to at least see it inside of Blender, okay? Um, here you can see, let's talk about some of these holes up here. So I have a 98 here, which is this road that goes through everything. So I wanted to make sure that that was on top of everything. You can see it cuts through the pine straw here. It cuts, this is the street area. So I put that in hole 98 because that was something added at the end. And I just want to make sure it was on top of everything. And I wanted to make sure it cut through these things right here. So these are all parking lots of these businesses that are out here. And the reason being is when you do a flyover of this hole right here, you'll definitely see <clears throat> these businesses and these parking lots. So I put, I'm putting some concrete and I'll add some kind of buildings these industrial buildings out here. I don't have to do a lot of detail because it's you'll only see it on the flyover, but that's what this hole 55 is. Um, I'm sorry, that's what, let's see, that should be hole, nope, I put those on the same hole as, let's see here, aha, as this hole here. Um, so you can see that I added those because they were in proximity to each other, okay? And then the street that comes here, which was hole 98, is gonna chop those off so that, that where the, uh, these parking lots meet the street, it'll be trimmed off. I know one of the things I also talked about uh, in the videos was also cart loops. So here's a good example. So here is a loop right here that was created by this cart path and this road that comes through here. And I put a break right here because the person teeing off, they're going this direction. And I could hide this. There's some trees here, and I think there's some trees here, so it'll hide this break. So I really wasn't concerned about putting that break in there. Um, however, in this area right here, which is fairly visible because you tee off basically over this, and you'd be doing a flyover, and then there's some per, you, there's a T here, and this is a very common area. Well, this uh, spot right here, I did a punch through. Okay, so that's a, uh, a case where I did I rather did a punch instead. And then this is the Milton Hershey Mansion up here. This area right here is also a punch through. Whoops, I hit it instead. Uh, this is a punch. And then I think I showed you guys and maybe the example of this exact spot. Let me see, I can't remember what I ended up doing here. Is this a punch? Yep, so that's a punch through as well. And let me see, I think there's a couple other areas where maybe I did a break, I'm not sure. There aren't too many loops in this course it's because the, the cart paths are a little sporadic. Um, I might have to actually do a punch here. Uh, although I, this is the halfway house. I don't think this is actually a high, I'm not gonna see that too often. Um, let's see here, other areas of interest. I think that's about it uh, on this course. Um, Another thing that I did, so this area right here are some houses that are very prominent. Just so you guys know, if you're not sure where to put some splines, let me see if I can show you this. Um, actually, let me show you down here. This might be of interest to you. Let me see. So this is hole 98, which is this water body in that road. So there was, and let me also hide, um, see what shape is this this is my cart path so i wasn't quite sure in some areas let me turn this on and it'll make more sense i got this image 1732 yeah there it is so this image 1732 that you see here which is an imported underlay or, or satellite overlay there's a functionality within unity called overhead image pr projector and there's a whole tutorial section on it. It can come in really handy when you're trying to spline something, but you can't exactly tell where it's at. And it's based on something you've added in game. So a good example of that here is you can see, 
me go back. This is going to be a better example. There are some houses here. What hole is this? 51. Let me hide these. If I zoom in here, I wasn't sure. I added these houses. These are houses I added inside of Unity. They're, they're custom built houses that I made. And I plopped them down in here. And I wanted to make sure that the landscaping, or in other words, the inkscape shapes, match where these houses are. Okay. So in Unity, you can take an overhead snapshot looking down on your course and then extract that out and bring it into Inkscape and do. And so what I did is I drew these out in Unity and then brought them back at, in. And now you'll see that I was able to actually create like the landscaping. OK, and I did some uh, deep rough around these houses so it matches up. So now when those houses are inside of Unity, the, the mulch, the pine straw around them will look pretty good. Um, because they're highly visible here. This is a T you go right by this house and they're somewhat known on this course. So I want to make sure that they looked good. Um, that's overhead image creator, a little bit too much advanced for this tutorial, but there are, there's a whole other sets of tutorials on it. If you're interested in finding out what those exactly do. Um, that's about it. I think this video has gone long enough at this point and I've blabbered on that there wasn't a lot of structure to this one. Uh, but you should be finishing up your Inkscape shapes, at least your first couple holes. Remember, only do a first couple holes and then uh, go through the rest of the process.